Hi there, and welcome back to Paint.net. Today we'll be doing a tutorial on the magic wand. So if we go up and select the magic wand, you will see that the option tools are very different than what the paintbrush tools are. First, we want to check our mode. Selection mode, you want it to be a solid continuous color, so this single block here, that is very important. It'll say replace. The flood mode, we want to make sure that that is on continuous or in this case contiguous. Now depending on the version you may have it might be a little uh, lightning bolt in the corner but right now I have a different version. I have 3.5.10 so it's a little, lightning, or a little light bulb. And the tolerance. The tolerance will become very important to us as soon as we have something to work with. So to get started I'd like you to pause this tutorial go online and find a picture that you can work with. I'm going to go ahead and select my picture. Now I teach a lot of kids so I'm going to select one of their favorite celebrities. I have Justin Bieber, Bieber Selena Gomez and Taylor Swift. I'll say select this guy. Alright, so the flood mode we have it on continuous. Now what that means is anytime I click on something it'll select the single shade of color as long as if there is no interruption in that color. So if, for instance, if I choose this black, because there's a break with the white around it, it will not seep in and pull out the black from her dress or the shattering from her eyes. Now tolerance, I mentioned it's very important. If it's too high, what in fact it's going to do is it's going to take multiple shades because it's going to consider that the tolerance is very high. So if I click on the background here, it'll select more than the background. It's actually pulling out her arm and basically leaving only the darker spots of her dress. That's not going to work for me. So dial it back. We'll try 50. And I'll select it again. Okay, a little better. But now we're missing out some of the T's and some of her little bits of strands of hair. So I'm going to dial it back even more to say 30. Ah, now I'm not touching my character at all in the least. It's completely around her outer edges. And I'm going to hit delete. If you press backspace and you get a solid color, it is because you are in fact replacing the background with whatever color you have in your primary color picker. If you press delete, as mentioned in the previous tutorial, you will have nothing. You will have zero background and so you'll have a transparency, which is exactly what we want. So take a few moments and experiment with the tolerance and take out as much as you can without affecting whatever character you're trying to cut out. So I'll just go ahead and do this real quick. And once you have pretty much most of your background cut out, the next important step is to take your eraser. You want to amp up your eraser with your brush. Pardon me, the brush width. Oh, that's a little bit big. So I'll do the larger strokes on the outside, cleaning it up. There we go. And if you want to get even closer to make such a really good job, you can just change your brush to something smaller and zoom in. So I'll just finish cleaning this up and I will get right back to you guys. Okay, welcome back. I finished cutting out Taylor Swift and now what we do is since we have no background we can put her into another background. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select her with our select tool. So that's this top left hand guy. going to highlight so that she's in blue. And once we have her selected we'll go to edit, copy. And now we need to put her somewhere. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a uh, background menu that I already have just any old background. And if you look in the top right, I'll still have my blank slate, my Taylor Swift, and my background. But because I'm in my background file, I only have one background layer. So the first thing I need is to add another layer. Layer 2. Now you see how it's uh, transparent like that? That's a good thing. It means now we can put anything on it that will show up above the background layer. 
So since we have Taylor Swift copied, we will paste her, and there she is. As long as she's in her little box, I can move her around and say position her right there. Now if you look on my layers palette, layer 2 is selected in blue. So if I hit enter, that locks her into the layer. Now anytime I move the layer, she will move. So I can move her but just by clicking and dragging. So what's happening is I'm not actually moving her, I'm moving the whole layer. But if it's all transparent, it doesn't really matter. You can see my lines are kind of off my, uh, my page right now. But that's alright. So I hit enter to deselect. Watch what happens if I change the order. She disappears because the solid is more visible than my background which is transparent for Taylor Swift. So I have to have her on top for things to look right. And there you have it. From here we can save and not just the project but we can save the actual file. So file, save as and to change it you want to change the type from a paint.net format to a JPEG, BMP, or GIF. And now I can say Taylor Swift with background. And just like that, she's now in my background. It'll tell you what size it'll come up as, 832.4 kilobytes. And if that's too big, you can always shrink it down and it'll tell you what size you'll get. So I'll click OK. And yes, I want to flatten because that'll mean that all my layers will compress into one image. And just like that, you are done. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next tutorial.